Good morning, hello, Merry Christmas Eve, and welcome to the Omni Coalition uh, TDH. I almost screwed that up. The State in History, aka TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by uh, other historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the smart device application Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thestate.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, click the underbar in the description below, or check them out anyway. Uh, I am Xander, and I'm joined by... Brother. Your favorite blob. The favorite blob indeed. Anyway, today is Saturn's Day, also known as Saturday, December 24th, 2022. Yep, Merry Christmas Eve to all, and to all a good night. Anyway, uh, why don't you start us off here today in 563, Mr. Blob? All right, in 560, uh, and <laughs> I also mess up. In 563, the Byzantine George, uh, uh, Church Hagia Sophia in Constantinople is dedicated for the second time after being destroyed by earthquakes. Ah, that's a, that's a place I gotta go check out. It's a really good looking building. It's still standing, so... Good. Go check. Yeah, before it gets destroyed by another earthquake. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not either. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. All right. You got one in 1476. Yeah. 400 Burgundian soldiers freeze to death during the siege. Uh, the, the siege of Nancy. Dang. That sucks. Yeah. Huh? They were prepared to die, but not that way. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, that's that's an awful way to go, you know, like, you're just sitting there, you know, sieging, you know, trying to trying to bleed them out only for yourself to get frozen, so, yeah. I think at some point uh, you get those um, inverted uh, feelings and then you think it's too warm and then you take all the clothes off and uh, then you freeze to death. Yeah, that's the uh, first stages of frostbite right there. Yeah, and in uh, 1593, a storm hits Texel, 40 ships hit, and 500 killed. Wow, that's that's a lot. Especially yeah. back in those, you know, 1593, 500 people, like that's that's an entire, you know, like city or something, you know, like. Yeah, it's an island in uh, North Holland in the Netherlands. So, uh, probably it was mostly trading ships. Maybe. And we're going to move on up here to 1651, in which Jan van Ribbick departed for Cape, Good, uh, Cape of Good Hope uh, to found the first permanent European settlement. Huh. All right. Um, Cape of Good Hope, uh, that's uh, in Africa, right? Uh, I think it... Uh... The, this might be the start of the yeah, uh it's the one at the yeah. south africa yeah so this is the start of the uh south african uh you know uh european colonies and everything what you know led up to what south africa is now today so it's uh near cape town <laughs> ah. i guess uh cape town uh, was named after the cape of good hope that makes sense you know cape town you know a town on the cape so. In 1734, Royal Alcazar of Madrid burned down uh, in Madrid with the loss of many artworks, though paintings of Velazquez were saved. All right. Well, that's a tragedy. You know, yeah. like a lot of history in that building that's gone forever. So, not good. And then 1777, uh, Cridimati, also called Christmas Island, was discovered by James Cook. Well, all right, and uh, you know that, that that that's probably why he called it Christmas Island because it was probably Christmas Day uh, when he discovered it. Where is Christmas Island anyway? So. Uh, b by the way, the Royal Alcazars, uh, they are palaces, not ah. a museum. So, uh, just in case you wonder. Oh, right now it is one o five in the morning on Christmas Island. So I have a feeling that uh, although this is on the twenty fourth, so. He discovered it on the 24th, but, uh, huh. 
uh, you know, time time is weird. Like, I, I was just yeah. get, I was just getting my my own brain in like some kind of vortex. So, but anyway, let's move on up into uh, 1799 and right back to you, Mr. Blob. It's the Jacobin blot, uh, a plot against Napoleon was uncovered. Ah, the Jacobin. So, blot. I think they are monks. Let's see here. Uh, the Jacobians were known for creating a strong government that could deal with the needs of war, economic chaos, and internal rebellion, such as war in the Vendi. This included establishing the world's first universal military draft as a solution to filling army ranks to put down civil unrest and prosecute war. Hmm. So, oh, uh, I, I think it's the uh, Jacobin Club, uh, the Society of the Friends of the Constitution. In uh, They were uh, the most influential political club during the French Revolution of 1789. Well, they'd have to be to try to make moves against Napoleon. So, and see, we have yep. uh, Lulikins in the live chat. Thank you for, uh, for watching us. Really appreciate it. Woot woot. Merry Christmas Eve to you. Yes. yes. Welcome. Yes. And we continue to the Treaty of Ghent in uh, 1814. Uh, it was signed on that day, ending the war of 1812 between the United States, the United Kingdom and their allies. Ah, oh, dang. So this is the end of the war of 1812. I didn't even know the United States were in it. <laughs> I, I know you're joking. You, you silly troll. <laughs> no, maybe I think of... Wasn't the War of 1812 the one with Russia and France? <laughs> uh, different oh, war. There, no, Di there were two, two Different War of 1812. <laughs> ah, I see, there were two wars of 1812. Yes. With limited participation by Spain in Florida. Ah. Uh. Florida. Uh, I know someone um, who's in Florida. Also, oh, that war ended when the peace treaty was ratified by Congress on 17 February 1815. Ah, oh, okay. So it took a couple months. To, like, of course, legislation, you know. If you ever yeah. want anything to get slowed down, bring the government involved. So. so, essentially, they declared peace, but officially it ended later. Yeah. You got All to right. one more. Yes, in 1818, the Christmas carol Silent Night, composed by Franz Xaver Gruber, is first sung at the St. Nicholas Parish Church in Oberndorf, Austria. Yeah, my dad used to sing that song to me all the time as a kid. Silent Night. You know, and I'm and not going to continue because I have a very bad singing voice. So. Simon, Simon and Garfunkel overlaid it with the 7 o'clock news uh, on a some particular day and they uh, uh, um, it, uh, it it showed the contrast between the peaceful um, you know uh, Christmas Eve and the things that go on in the world oh yeah well you know speaking of you know Christmas peace and everything tomorrow we have a really interesting article that we're going to go over the Christmas truce during the first world war so I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to take us up into 1832. The first U.S. Uh, the black hospital was founded by White's Chartered, uh, Savannah, Georgia. Huh. White's Chartered. What is that? Like, is that a company or something? What is White's Chartered? Uh, I think it would be uh, big if it was a con company. I think it was just uh, by white people. I, I guess. I don't know. Like, this is... This is worded strangely, so I, I don't know uh, what to take from that. Uh, we're going to move on up into 1851. A fire devastated the U.S. Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., destroying 35,000 volumes. Another fire destroying, like, didn't we just talk about something like that not too long ago? Like, yeah, the Royal Alcazar of Madrid. Yeah, yeah, the beginning of the, of the show. So, man, yeah, so two fires on the 24th. Something's a little strange. So I, yeah. I have a feeling somebody's trying to bury some some information. So. Or maybe God hates Christmas. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe God does hate Christmas. You know? I mean, 
why wouldn't he? Like, anyway, uh, and then uh, we also have in uh, 1877, Thomas Edison filed a patent for the phonograph. Yeah, as I said yesterday, he stole it from somebody. He did not invent that. He just took it, and because he had the money to claim, you know, the patent, he, he did, you know? Yeah. So, so if you steal a Tesla car, does it become an Edison? Yes. Yes, it does. That's a, that's a joke I heard recently. Yeah, no, that joke's uh, been making around around the internet for about a year now. In 1893, Henry Ford, the automobile uh, um, manufacturer, uh, he completes his first useful petrol gasoline fueled engine. Oh, that's cool. So the uh, the internal combustion engine. Uh, I think that was the auto motor. Yes. But uh, he he used uh, petrol and gasoline uh, together. It seems. Um. Yeah. Well, like it kind of sounds like uh, the engine I had on my GoPad way back in the day. You actually had to mix the oil in with the gas can, uh, and then pour I it in the tank. Oh, I think it's petrol and gasoline is the same, but he. He made the first useful engine for that. Before that, uh, they probably used other stuff. Yeah, like diesel? Maybe? Uh, I mean, 1893, like, that's at the very start of uh, the Industrial Revolution, really, like, you know, after steam power and all that stuff. Yeah, it's seven years after the invention of the uh, automobile, the modern car. Yep. So let's continue. In 1900, uh, the uh, uh, one moment. The French ah, Chamber. Yeah. The French Chamber of Deputies and Senate pay, uh, pass a bill calling for an end to the agitation or prosecutions against those involved in the Dreyfus affair, which has divided France since 1894. That was a big thing in Europe at the time. Oh yeah, didn't it continue on until 1906 or something? Or I don't know. Dreyfus, because we were talking about this just yesterday. Dreyfus. Oh, I see. Uh, Dreyfus Affair uh, from 1894 until 1906, I was right. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's, it took another six years for it to fully be resolved, but you know, after the first six years, they're just like, enough. So that's a thing that lasted for 12 years. Yeah, it was a big treason scandal in the um, yeah. French. Uh... In 1904, German Southwest Africa abolishes slavery of young children. It's disgusting that that was even a thing to have to be abolished, but good job, question mark? Like, you know. Well, yeah, but unfortunately it still happens in many countries in Africa. Yeah, it does. And so out of what? I mean, hell, like you know, certain politicians. I'm not going to name any names, um, but uh, you know, it's a female politician who's been trying to run for president. She's the wife of a former president. You know, you know, I, I thought her fingers yeah. deep in child trafficking and human trafficking. I thought, I thought at first you would uh, talk about Comey. About what? Uh, Comey, that. Uh, that uh, African dictator who uh, was known for that, among other oh, things. Oh, I, I don't, I never heard of that. The only Coney I know is Coney Island. <laughs> and I think it's my turn. Yes, it is. 1906, Reginald Fessenden became the first to broadcast music over the radio. This is disputed. Um, but uh, potentially, this is the first time anybody ever heard uh, music over the radio in the 1906. Like that's that's astounding, you know. Like think yeah. about it. Like like something that that like like doesn't just receive you know signals and then transfers that into audible noise, but the start of it something turns audible noise into transmittable signals. Like technology is amazing, and like even in 2022, some of the things like you know like radio, like automobile engines, you know the flights, yeah. like things have been around for like well over a hundred, even two hundred years, it's just mind-blowing how we figured out how this works, you know? And like, today everyone has a radio in his pocket. Oh god, dude, there's there's more technology in this rectangle 
than what was used to send people to the moon. You know? Like, that is absolutely crazy. And, and everybody has these. You know? And they, they throw them away. You know? Like, it's nothing. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. That just shows you how far technology has come. It's, it's banana days, man. And we're going to move on up into 1920. Yeah. Uh, Enrico Caruso gave his last public performance with the Metropolitan Opera in uh, New York City. Oh. And I'm going to take these... The uh, I'm sorry? Um, one of the greatest singers of all time. Ah. Uh, I'd never heard of him, unfortunately. So. What? what? i never heard of him. Hey, Caruso, you, you don't know him? No. Oh my... There's too uh, much things you, in the world to know. I can't know everything. Oh, uh, you might want to look him up. I probably should. Uh, I have him in a separate tab here to remind me. But I'm going to move on up into 1922. 100 years ago on this date, the British Broadcasting Company uh, broadcast the first British radio play, The Truth About Father Christmas. Huh. So the first British radio play. So that's cool. And then so also... Yeah. What is truth about Father Christmas? Um. What 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 is he really? Uh, well, like he is based off of uh, Saint Nicholas, who was an actual person who did give, you know. Um, unfortunately, uh, now it has been hijacked by uh, corporations, and uh, the traditional image of Santa Claus, as we know and love today, is actually from a Coca Cola marketing campaign. So. Yeah, I know. I know. No, I, I, I was just. Yeah, that's the truth about Father Christmas right now. I was just heckling a bit because I don't find the radio play uh, currently, but. Uh... Uh, but also at that same time in 1922, the London Coliseum opened. All right, well, let's take a let's take a look at what the London Coliseum looks like. 1922, London Coliseum. Let's see here. Ah, uh, so it wasn't really a coliseum. Um, Unless you're talking about the inside. That is gorgeous. Uh, huh. But on the outside, it's just another building. It doesn't look like a Coliseum. It says Coliseum. Well, all right, then. Yeah. Anyway, uh, going back to you, uh, I believe you got one here in uh, 1930. Yes, we have... Uh... The Indonesian president Sukarno, who was sentenced to four years in prison by Indonesian authorities in Bandung, Dutch East Indies. Huh. He was the first president of Indonesia. Um, but I wonder if this was before or after his presidency. Well, Indonesia became independent in 1949, so it must have been uh, some decades before. Huh. I wonder if this is something kind of somewhat very roughly similar to what happened with Mandela you know because like he was in prison too and then he later became you know the president of the very country that imprisoned him you know because of our apartheid so that'd be interesting actually let's see here Sukarno um yeah uh, okay he was, he was apparently detained for over a decade dang huh oh because because he wanted independence for Indonesia. All right, so because he wanted Indonesian independence, they imprisoned him. That's that's not intelligent. So. Yeah, and those, those were the first four, uh, first four years of his prison time, it seems. Dang. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on up to 1933 here. All right. In 1933, the Paris Express train derails and kills 160, injures 300 in France. Uh, that's, uh, that sucks. Didn't we have uh, recently a train derailing in uh, Paris, uh, uh, in France? Did we? Mm, I think. Let's see here. Uh, 2015. Uh, we have that. Yeah. I mean on the show, like two days ago or so. Oh, oh, uh, you probably. Like, yeah. I thought you were talking about an event that actually happened. Uh, well, like, well, news, like, you know, recent. But, uh, no, like, yeah, we probably covered a train derailment or something. Like, I don't remember every every article we go through. I mean, like, you know. Yeah, 
I, I thought it also was in France in the 1930s. Maybe. I, I, I don't remember, but you have a better, better memory than I do, so you're, you're probably right. You usually always are, so. I don't know. In, in 1936, the first radioactive isotope medicine was administered in Berkeley, California. Oh, wow. Leave it to California to use radioactivity to cure uh, ailments. <laughs> <laughs> we are the cancer. Oh. Oh. In 1939, during the Second World War, Pope Pius XII made a Christmas Eve appeal for peace. Which didn't work. But... At least he's trying so he looks like a good pope he looks like he looks stern but fair you know so a strict but fair pope a strict but fair pope heckle pope <laughs> anyway <laughs> 19, 1941 first ships of admiral nagamono's pearl harbor fleet returned to japan so uh, after the uh, pearl harbor th attacks uh they, they get back home just in time for christmas to celebrate murdering yeah. 2,000 people and awakening the sleeping dragon. So, yeah. Um, did that, that go well for them? No. No. Uh, four years later, we dropped two sons on their nation. And, uh, you know, they, they learned real quick not to fuck with us. Um, anyway, we're going to move on up here to 1943. Terence Radigan's Wild of Sunshines premiered in London. All right. And that's my three. Yes, and in 1943, also United States President Franklin De uh, Delano Roosevelt appoints General Dwight D. Eisenhower as Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces. Ah, uh, so this is when he got his five stars. Yes. Just Christmas Eve, no less. What a good present. Like, hey, Merry Christmas. You're now the Supreme Commander of all Allied Forces in, uh, in Europe. Like, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, young David went on to win the war, as we know. Yes. In 1946, United States General McNarney gives 800,000 minor Nazis amnesty. Minor Nazis, in quote. Yeah, minor Nazis as in, like, you know, like they were, like, affiliated with the whole thing. You know, like soldiers, delegates, you know, people yeah. operating within any facet of the Nazi regime. You know, not necessarily uh, that... Go ahead. Party members. Yeah, essentially. Like, you know, like the people who weren't like whole hog into it, essentially. Like, they're like, yeah, I can drop this idea, you know, no problem. Yeah, but probably a few big ones also got away there. Uh, well, 1948 um, looks interesting as well. All right. Uh, we have the first United States completely solar heated house uh, occupied in Dover, Massachusetts. Dang. All the way back in 1948, the first solar heated. Huh. I wonder if it's just a glass house or something. I don't know. When were solar <laughs> that... panels invented? Um. Uh, 1883. Holy crap, what? dude. I know. The, so the first solar panel was invented by Charles Fritz in 1883, where he coated a thin layer of selenium with an extremely thin layer of gold. The resulting cells had a conversion electric electrical efficiency of only about 1%. So, holy cats, bro. I had no idea solar was that old of a technology. And that's what, you know, what, what I was just saying at the top of the show. Like, the amount of, um, the amount of, of you know, like that makes technology. solar panels older. That makes solar panels older than the Eiffel Tower or the Statue of Liberty, I think. And sliced bread. Of course. Solar power has been around since longer than sliced bread. That is, that is weird to think about. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, I'm going to move on up here to uh, 1955. Uh, author Alotus Huxley took LSD for the first time. Uh oh. <laughs> That's why he wrote Animal Farm, <laughs> probably. Uh, oh, is he the author of Animal, uh, Animal Farm? Yes. Oh, well, you thank him. Like, you know, like, um, 
you know, I, you, you know me, I'm not big on government, but we do need the FDA. You know, there does need to be regulations, you know, with food. It, so Isn't he? Isn't he what? Isn't he the author of Animal Farm? Uh, Animal Farm. I'm not sure. Well, he wrote Brave New World. Uh, George Orwell, actually. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. It was George Orwell. Huxley wrote Brave New World and uh, congratulated George Orwell to 1984. Yep. But uh, it seems he wrote a uh, few more novels after Brave New World. All right. But yeah, no, this guy, he took LSD for the first because I was going to say 1955, um, like, you know, an Animal, yeah. Animal Farm was, was published way before that, I believe. Like, wasn't it 1912 or something? Um, no, 1945, huh? But right. how, how do we know, like... I don't know. But uh, before we move on up, we just got joined by... Oh, the Golden Loon. Welcome to the show. How was Thank the gym? Uh, Jimmy. Good. It was good. You looking forward to uh, going to the gym next month? Uh, whether I like it or not, yes. Well, I'm mainly talking about all the, you know, all the oh, New no, Year's e uh, no. New, New Year's Revelation people. Yeah, we you burn know? them out in about two weeks. Yeah. They come back, and then they can't walk for three days, and yeah. then they say, I don't think so. Sounds like me. <laughs> so. Anyway. So, it seems Brave New World is from 1932. Ah. All right. Um, Our I think that we have, uh, we skipped one here in 1953. Uh, two fast express trains crashed head-on, killing 103 people in Czechoslovakia. Oh, Ooh. Dang, that's not good. So. And the next one also. Uh, 1953 as well. Uh, Wellington, uh, Auckland in New Zealand, express trains swept away in flood, killing 166. Jeez, man. Holy cow. What was all the death same today? Day. Yeah, same day, same year. So, yeah. wow. 24. December is not a good day to uh, use the train, it seems. Yeah, no, stay off the trains. Actually, uh, the uh, the UK, they're having a whole uh, train or something uh, strike on top of an EMT, emergency medical technician strike. Like, uh, a whole bunch of things are striking right now in Britain. So, Great. not good. Um, but anyway, uh, 1954, it's your turn now. Huxley, yeah. Yes. In 1954, Laos gains its independence. Go Laos! Nice. We we already we just uh, spoke about this Huxley oh. guy. Actually, we we kind of uh, yeah we we goofed. We um, oh, you went back. Okay. Yeah. So so now so we're back we on track here. 1961. 61. Yes. AFL Championship in uh, the NFL. No, AFL uh, American Football League. This is before the NFL. Ah. AFL Championship, Balboa Stadium, San Diego. Houston Oilers beat San Diego Chargers 10-3. Billy Cannon scores games only TD. That's touchdown, I guess. Yes, it is. And uh, when was the NFL created? Uh, oh, 1920. Oh, the NFL is the old one. Yeah, okay. The AFL, which they're showing there, is the upstart. They eventually merged. Okay. And then came the AFC, NFC, and two divisions. The whole thing is the NFL. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. In 1966, the Soviet spacecraft Luna 13 lands on the moon. Ah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Once again, the the Russians beat us, you know, to it. Like, you yeah. know, there wasn't uh, there wasn't a, a man on the moon, but they, they were the first to touch the moon. The first in the space, the first to send an animal into space, the first to send a woman into space, uh, the first to send yeah. a man into space. You're talking about touching the moon with it. Yes. Okay. Like, like just actually getting there. They're the first to Venus too. They had a probe that uh, went to Venus, I believe. Because touch to me means you. Yeah. Well, like, like this. Yeah, you, you touched know. that bottle. Well, I didn't touch the bottle. The bottle touched the, the. This touched this. This touched the bottle. No. <laughs> no, this reminds okay. me of your bedpost. Keep going. Keep going. No. Inside joke. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, you got another one in '69 uh, here. All right, we have uh, sports history. Kurt Flatt writes to baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn, uh, refusing to accept the Cardinals' rights 
uh, to deal him and in favor of free agency. This is huge for baseball, actually. This is when uh, when you when you signed a player initially, you know, uh, a rookie out of the minor leagues or whatever, you owned him forever until you decided you didn't want him anymore. Oh, dang. And then you could trade him, you could do whatever. He said, no, no. Uh, mm. I, I want to be a free agent and went to court, big hoopla. He won, and now you have baseball players making multi-million dollars as free agents. So this is huge, for, if huh. you're a baseball fan at all. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, 1970, uh, pardon me, Walt Disney released the animated musical The Aristocats, featuring voices of Phil Harris, Eva Gabor, Hermione Bedel... 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 Bedel Lily, I can't pronounce her name. Sterling, Sterling Holloway and Scatman Crothers. Ooh, Scatman. Scatman. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, the Aristocats. I didn't know it was that old. I have that on VHS. So I thought that was a '90s uh, release, or maybe they re-released it. I don't know. The Aristocats. Let's see here. Well, 1970, so it had to be. Ah, no, it's the same one. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's old. <coughs> Maybe you up to 101 Dalmatians. Um, no, um, I, I know about the 101 Dalmatians. I have that on VHS as well. I have a lot of stuff on VHS from my childhood. Um, no, I thought the Aristocats was, uh, was more recent. Maybe I got, uh, befuddled into some advertisement or something. Or maybe it was, like, some kind of re-release. Could have been. You know? I don't know. Yeah. With children's movies you can re-release them every 10 years you got a whole new audience yeah maybe and then we also have in 1971 peruvian airlines electric crashed at headwaters on amazon uh or at the headwaters of the amazon killing all except julian margaret uh, Kopicki, found who dead uh, 10 days later so found alive 10 days later oh, so yeah, yeah so it crashed at the headwaters of the amazon so we're uh, like wow so it's 91 people who were killed. Oh man, they, they should, you know, they should mention that, like, you know, 91 people yeah. died. So that's a lot of people. Yeah, it is. But then in 1974, former U.S. astronaut John Glenn joined the Senate for Ohio. Yeah, that's right. Dude, the amount of the, uh, the amount of like, uh, yeah, you know, like actors, actresses, you know, wrestlers, you know, like. People in, you know, like popular culture positions that you never assume would ever be in politics are in politics. Yeah. Like uh, there is this, uh, there is this wrestler. I don't remember the name, and you know, Alice would would know if she was here. If she helped me out with this. Um, but uh, there is this wrestler who, uh, after he retired, he became mayor of his hometown or something like that. Oh yeah, no, no, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. 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 Up in uh, Minnesota, I think. Yeah. We. Well, I, I guess yeah. you were talking about it the other day too. No, not so, me. But I know who you're talking about. Well, I mean, like a while ago, you you and Alice were talking about him. I, I, I think Could have. I, his name escapes me. But you, there's yeah. a lot of that. Ronald Reagan. Oh well, yeah, Went Ronald from Reagan. Actor, a B actor, to uh, governor, to uh, president, to president. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, my keynote speaker in high school. That that yeah. was that was one of the steps in between. You know, that yeah. Was, that was crucial for him to speak at my high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move on. So in night. In 1939, a Secret Service agent, uh, a later Secret Service agent, was watching a movie um, which inspired him to become actually the Secret Service agent, and that was the guy who saved Ronald Reagan's life. Ah, okay. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, didn't you post something about that earlier? I read that yeah, somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Like... And, and one of the actors in that movie was Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's you know like it's little things like that. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, like that 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 weird moments in history video you posted uh, yesterday in the History Channel, mm. or the day before. I gotta watch Good. that again. That that was really interesting. So uh, anyway, I think it's your turn now. Um, All right, and we skipped a few, so I will. Uh... In 1973, the District of Columbia Home Rule Act is passed, allowing the residents of Washington, D.C. to elect their own lo uh, local government. Oh, good. Mm. Because, because that uh, makes sense, you know? Like, they, yeah. they should yeah. be able to elect their own, you know, government. So. Yeah. 
It never makes well, sense. DC is a bit of an isolated case. Cause, yeah, they need their their own mayor and everything else. It is, and like, wasn't it like in the '90s when they finally allowed them to vote in the presidential elections or something? Uh, boy, no, I, I think yeah. they've always been able to vote. I I don't know. Um, Puerto Rico t- can't vote. Yeah, they can. No, they can't. Oh yeah, they can. No, of course they can. No, they have no representation whatsoever. They don't have any representation, but they can vote. They don't have a senator or congressman. No. Okay. They should. You know. People live there. Yeah, but they're also not a state. Not, I, well, I, I don't know how how can they get around it, but yeah. they can vote. Anyway. Anyway, in 1973, also a ferry boat capsized off the coast of Ecuador, uh, drowning 200. Oh, jeez. Oh, well, stay off of planes, trains, automobiles, and boats. Then, <laughs> yeah. Just We're going down the list. Stay in the, Stay indoors. Oh, stay Be home. safe. Stay home. Yeah, stay indoors and get hit by an asteroid. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, in the ninth. So hard, my hat fell off. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. In 1979, the first Ariane rocket launched. Uh, Ariane? What is an Ariane rocket? Never heard of that. I thought it's the European rocket. Oh, I see. Uh... Ariane is a series of European civilian expendable launch vehicles for space launch use. The name comes from the French spelling of the mythical cr- character uh, Ariadne. Uh, France first proposed the Ariadne rocket uh, project as it was officially agreed upon at the end of 1973 after discussions between France, Germany, and the UK. So you are right. Yeah, yep. I mean, that yeah. makes sense. He would know that. He is European, so it's in his backyard. Yep. So. And, and the next is uh, supposed to launch in uh, 2030s. And <clears throat> Another one more. Test. Well, yeah. um, the loon here wants us to read uh, 1981 here yeah. as well. Oh, a- actually, the next Ariane rocket is supposed to launch in the fourth quarter of 2023. They didn't launch that one yet. Oh, All right. Okay. Mr. Loon, you uh, go on. No, he wants you to read it. No, I can't <laughs> what it was. Go ahead. Which one? Uh, 1981, the USSR. All right. The USSR performs a nuclear test at Eastern Kazakh Semipat... Uh, wait. Semipalitinsk, USSR. Ah. So is that within the yeah. USSR? Yes. That, okay, that is... Yeah. Uh, I can't pronounce it, but... Yeah, yeah but it's they... It's USSR right there, you know? Um... Okay, they yeah. perform so many nuclear tests. Uh, yeah. okay. Have I shown you the video of every nuke exploded from 1945 through 1990? Uh, I think you have a long yeah. time ago, quite a yeah. while ago. Yeah, with the difference that they get bigger and bigger. Yeah. yeah, all the different colors and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, the amount of nuclear tests, you know, it's just outrageous. Like, there's, what was it, 2,000 explosions, you know, in total in the, those 45 years? And then there's been more since then because, you know, North Korea back in the early 2000s started testing their stuff so it's really hard having a difficult conversation and seeing my reflection with my <laughs> you know um. anyway uh, let's get back on track here 1985 uh, the Ballon d'Or Juventus French midfielder uh, Michel Platini is named Europe's best football player for the third consecutive time Beats Verona striker uh, Breben Alkier and Barcelona midfielder Bernd Schuster. All right. Okay. Then, uh, let's see, you got the 1979. So, it's the year 1989. Panama's dictator Manuel Norega suck out asylum or seeked out asylum uh, at Vatican Embassy. Huh. Noriega. Trying to go to the Vatican, he's you know knocking on the wrong door there. They ain't gonna help him. Yeah. Well, I hope they didn't at least. And then we got some more sports history here in 1990. The Expos traded Tim Raines to the White Sox for Ivan Calderon and Barry Jones. Why do they have that highlighted? I I don't know. Hmm. Like, is, is that any significance? Not I, to me. I've never heard of these names. I've heard of the White Sox, but <laughs> well, yeah, they're a baseball team. Yeah. Never heard of the Expos, Tim Raines, Ivan Calderon. You ever heard of the Jones. Expos? No. 
Montreal Expos baseball team. Oh, that's probably why they were from Montreal. So. <laughs> but then also in 1990, Saddam Hussein said Israel will be Iraq's first target. Yeesh. Uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, the, yeah, yeah, violent man. So, wasn't he the guy who? I know that was. Well, yeah, I think he was. Who was um, then later um, uh, running away and everything? And we talked about that recently. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, when... like we found him recently. Like it wasn't it early in December. Like we found him in a spider hole. Yeah, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, try to execute him. Yep. <laughs> and we, we will get to his execution in six days, it seems. Ah, good. In uh, 1993, uh, no, 1992, the United States President George Herbert Walker Bush issues a pardon to former National Security Advisor Robert McFarlane and also pardons Caspar Weinberger for the Iron Contra affair. Wow. You, you read that from the heart, bro. Like, like that's a lot more information that the source here had. Well, yeah, the, I, uh, I don't know much about the Iran-Contra affair, but I was, I, I was still a wee little thing when that was going on. It, it's actually the both entries, uh, if you notice the one above the highlight. Oh, okay. All right. Well, well you know, you, you, man, I, I'm so happy that I found you, bro. Like, you... <laughs> You see things that I don't see on the show, and that's awesome, man. Like, and now we have a very, very disgusting terrorist attack in the 1994. Four Muslim fundamentalists captured the Air France pilot in Algiers. E. Uh, the story behind that is that they wanted to fly a plane into the Eiffel Tower, and uh, that was uh, Air France flight 8969, and I think they had abducted it for like two days or something. Dang. So the backstory is he wanted to fly to the Eiffel Tower. I did not know that. that now, see, that's interesting. That's weird. Like, you're going to have to be precise because there's big holes in the Eiffel Tower, but uh, depending no, on the size they... of the plane, I don't think it would matter, actually. No, you just go through it. You yeah, the, it the plan was uh, either uh, fly into it or uh, blow it up above. Yep. Then we're going to move on up into 1996. Another Balloon Dior, uh, Borussia Dortmund's German sweeper Matthias Sammer was named the best football player in Europe ahead of PSV slash Barcelona striker Ronaldo and Newcastle United striker Alan Shearer. All right. Yeah. Matthias Sammer, a very famous German uh, soccer player at the time. Yeah. Why does this guy look like uh, that one character from... Um, that's Ronaldo. <laughs> That's Ronaldo. Not... No, he looks like that one uh, that one grocery store worker from Hot Fuzz. The the tall guy. He kinda has like, you know, the like, you know, the the, the smile, you know, the Yarp look. So uh, anyway, uh, I'm gonna move on up into nineteen ninety nine. Opening of Saint Peter's Holy Door by Pope John Paul II in approach of third millennium. Yeah. And then, uh, gonna do the split here real quick. Welcome to part two. We're gonna move on up into the year 2001. Uh, why don't you start us off, Mr. Protoblob? Yes. Uh, in 2001, the Time magazine names New York Major Rudy Giuliani Person of the Year for his leadership after the 9-11 attacks. Rudy Giuliani. Like, I've heard that name recently for bad reasons. Like, oh, he's, yeah, he's yeah. an advisor to Bush when he was president, and not Bush, uh, Trump. Trump, ah, oh, okay. He was the mayor of New York. He ran for president once. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Rudy Giuliani, um, uh, his, back then he was a great guy, but uh, he got in the news for other things recently, yes, he's yeah. a... In 2003, the Spanish police thwart an attempt by the ETA, that's the uh, Basque, um, the, the underground organization to free the Basque land. Uh, I don't know how it translates. A terrorist organization, more or less. Uh, yes, uh, to detonate 50 kilogram of explosives at 3.55 p.m. inside Madrid's busy Chalmantin station. However you pronounce that. So this, the police has uh, prevented that. Well, that's good. 
Yeah. And also, we missed in 1717 because it was not here on the oh, history. Whoops. The whoops. Great Flood, the Christmas Flood of 1717, with about 14,000 people dead in Germany, Netherlands, Scandinavia on Christmas night. Yeah, why is that not even on our on our list here, from our source? You're right. You have it here. The Flood of 1717. Yeah. Huh. Uh, well, no, it's, it's, we didn't even miss it. It's not even on here. That's what I'm saying. They missed it. Ah, okay. Yeah, they did. That's a big one, too. Yeah, so it seems unclear um, what day it happened. Uh, it was worsened, apparently, by further floods on the 25th and 26th. Uh, oh, no, that's Feb February. Oh, it says here December 25th, so we might be talking about this tomorrow. Oh. I don't oh. know. The German Wikipedia says 24th, so probably it began on the 24th and uh, went into the 25th. Yeah. yeah. I mean... 14,000 people drowned. Oh, the... Yeah, that's... It says here 24th to 25th of December in the German Wikipedia. So we probably have that again tomorrow. All right. Let's, uh... Let's, let's hope that they have it in there, you know? Like, we'll see. Anyway, before we move on to the bursts, uh, audience, are there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wished we had elaborated more about? Anything you would have liked us to, to say? Star dialogue in the underbar, or uh, in, in the comments section. Uh, but what about you, Loon? You know, anything, uh, you know, that grabbed your attention more than most? Oh, it's hard to say. I didn't see it all. Yeah. But that flood alone right there is really upsetting, you know, that many people. What? Well, I mean, like, on top of all the rail disasters, the car disasters, yeah. like, you know, like, a lot of people died on the 24th. Yeah. That's, the 24th is a dark day. And then the big and some building. Free agency. Yeah. That's yeah. a biggie for me. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, just, just wait until you get tomorrow to the Indonesian flat of 2004, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I, I yeah. Yeah, anyway, so let's, uh, let's move on to the burst. I'm gonna start us off in the year three. We have Galba was a Roman emperor born in. Uh, all right, you have a good one. Uh, born in uh, Terracia, Italy, died in the year 69. So he was 66 years old when he died. Maybe, like yes. depending on things. Uh, then we also have King John, uh, 1166, was the king of England from 1199 to 1216 in the same year that he died. Probably died in office. He was also a lord of Ireland from 1177 through 1216. Uh, he famously agreed to the Magna Carta, born in Beaumont Palace, Oxford, England. I think he was forced to sign the Magna Carta to uh, transfer over a lot of his powers to like Congress or the House of Commons or the House of whatever, but uh, still he signed it, you know, and the Magna Carta being you know one of the most important historical documents of all time. So, yes. Yep. In 1809, we have Kit Carson, uh, American frontiersman, Indian fighter, and army officer, born in Madison County, Kentucky. Huh. And he died in 1868. So it sounds like he uh, fought against the Native Americans, or? Uh, well, he died of, a of, uh, of an aortic aneurysm. So uh, I guess that's like your aorta ruptures. So, uh, maybe he died in battle because of that or something, I don't know. But... Yeah. I... Anyway. Yeah, he, he was fighting against a revolt by the uh, Native Americans in uh, 1861, 1862 in that um, revolution by, by them. Uh, All right. In um, 1822, we have Matthew Arnold, the English poet and critic, Dover Beach, born in Laleham, England, and he died in 1888. Oh, so he was born 200 years ago on this date. That's, that's wild. Yes. And he was elected Oxford Professor of Poetry in 1857 and uh, was the first to lecture in English rather than Latin. Huh. All right. So, uh, essentially, he made uh, uh, it easier for the students to follow what he says. That's always a good, you know, that's, that's a job of a teacher. Not just teach, but, you know, make teaching, you know, learnable and yes. fun and engaging. 
engaging and all that jazz, you know? Yes. You got one here in 1837. Yes, I thought uh, it's your turn, but okay, oh. I can do. Well, maybe in, in, 18... in 1837, we have Empress Elizabeth of Austria, born in Munich, Germany, and she died in 1898. Ah. All right. And we also have in 1868, I believe, uh, we have Emmanuel Lasker, a German world chess champion from 1894 through 21, born in uh, Barlink, Poland, and died in 1941. Ah. And look. He was much more than just a world chess champion. There are now three big books about all he did. Hmm. He was mathematician, philosopher, game theorist, and uh, in 2008 he was induced in the Hall of Fame of the German sports. Good. I don't know why it took so long, but good. So, and plus, like, you know, all the other stuff, he was like, you know, like game theory and, you know, being a mathematician and such, that kind of goes along with the territory of being a chess master, you know? Well, he invented a few other games also. Oh, like what? What games did he invent? Uh, one named after him called Laska, L-A-S-K-A. Huh. I'm gonna have to look that up, Laska. Yeah, it's an, um, oh, I see. the checkers uh, variation, essentially. Yeah, I see. Interesting. Huh. Anyway, we also have Howard Hughes was born on this date in 1905, a U.S. reclusive billionaire, filmmaker, and aviator of the Hughes aircraft, born in Humble, Texas. Uh, that's, that's an interesting place for somebody like him to be born in, Humble. He went on to, you know, do crazy things like uh, make a the spruce goose, you know. Yeah. So. But, uh, you got one in 1918. Yes, we have uh, Dave Bartholomew, the American R&B rock and jazz musician, composer, producer, and songwriter. For example, I hear you knocking. Ain't that a shame? Walking to New Orleans. Born in Edgard, Louisiana, and he died in 2019. Wow, he was 101 years old. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. So many great hits. 100 years ago on this date. Yes, you... Uh, uh, your turn, right? You have uh, one more? Oh, okay. We have Ava Gardner. The American actress on the beach, Night of the Iguana. She was born in Grabtown, New, uh, North, Cal no, North Carolina. Now I get it. Yeah. And she died in 1990. On the Beach, that is a movie that I have got to see. I've been meaning to watch it. It came to my mind actually the other night. Um, it's based off of a novel. And, um, like, you know, spoiler alert, uh, but, um, like, it's basically. It's about, uh, I believe, if, if this is the same one, it's about um, a crew of a, uh, of a like a, of an Australian or like a British or s some kind of submarine crew. Um, they were underwater uh, doing maneuvers and such when nuclear war broke out, and then when they resurfaced, you know, there's nobody. Like nobody's receiving their transmissions. They're not getting any anything. They keep, you know, sending out pings. Is anybody out there? Is anybody out there? And then. Um, and then eventually they were getting this one, you know, like this one ping on the, uh, on the, on the Morse code thing or whatever. It was just, it was just a boop, like, you know, just a one thing. So it's like, you know, somebody has to be alive. So, so they tracked it, uh, and they traced it and it was, uh, somewhere in Australia and they landed and they discovered it was actually a Coke bottle that was on some kind of string and the wind was making it hit the, tr hit the button on the, um, on the Morse code thing, so it was not a, a person trying to broadcast he was alive. So they were the last humans on Earth, essentially, as far as they knew. And that's that's and a chilling movie. You know where the name uh, of the movie comes from? Uh, where? Uh, well, there are two things. It's a Royal Navy term that means retired from the service, but it also oh. refers to T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Man. Huh. In this last 
meeting places, we grope together and avoid speech gathered on this beach of the turn uh, to to mid river. Dang. I see you posted a couple more links, so I'm adding those in the underbar right now. Let's see a copy link. So the the first edition of the a uh, novel actually uh, contains extracts from T.S. Eliot's poem on the title page, so that's how you know uh, that the collect, uh, connection is there. Yep. And then we're going to uh, move on up here. Uh, what year was that? Uh, 1922. We're going to move on up here into 1932. Colin Cowdery uh, was born on the state. He was an English cricket batsman, 144 tests, 7,624 runs at 44.06. Born in Udagamandalam, India. And died in the year 2000. Hmm. And then we also have in 1944... Oh, uh, well, we're not there yet. Actually, we have... Oh, no. Oh, God. I think we are at 1944. No, we're not in 1944. 1940, very unfortunately, oh. we have Anthony Fauci. Yeah. Uh, a U.S. Immu immunologist, White House COVID-19 Task Force, born in Brooklyn, New York City. Well, that explains why he is how he is. New York. Oh, man. One of the most evilest of evils ever evil on this planet. Yeah, I would say what I think, but then we would probably be uh, completely censored. So yes. I will continue instead. I'm with, pretty uh, sure I would uh, say the same thing, you know. So we will just continue with two very great musicians. In 1944, we have Mike Kerb, American pop singer, choral master and producer for the Mike Kerb congregation. It says Sweet Gingerbread Man here, but of course Burning Bridge is also a very famous song. He was born in Savannah, Georgia. Huh. Savannah. I, did, I didn't know you had the Savannah in Georgia. We do, apparently. <laughs> and in 1945 we have Lemmy Kilmister, born as Ian Fraser Kilmister. The British heavy metal musician of Motorhead, born in Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire, and he died in 2015. I've heard of Motorhead. Well, he, he was essentially the Ace of Spades. The Ace of Spades? I almost said it the other way around. <laughs> and then we got Jeff Sessions, the 76 today, born on the state in 1946. He is a U.S. Republican politician, U.S. Attorney General from 2017 through 18. And Alabama Senator from 1997 through 2017, born in Selma, Alabama. And we also have in 1957, Hamid Korzai, we spoke about him the other day actually, President of Afghanistan from 2001 through 14, born in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Oh wow, that's where the Kandahar giant, you know, situation thing occurred. That's wild. Yeah. In 1958, we have Michael Flynn, American General and National Security Advisor in 2017. He was born in Middleton Road, no, in Middletown, Rhode Island. Yep. So, it's his 64th birthday today, you finished the chess board. <laughs> mm -hmm. Happy birthday. And uh, one year later, in 1959, we have the uh, American director Lee Daniels. Director of Precious and Empire, born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Huh. All right. So it's 63rd birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then uh, 1961, we have uh, Ilham uh, I Aliyev, right? Nice to yep. President of Azerbaijan Republic, born in Baku, Azerbaijan. All right. Not to be confused with the chess player of the same name, by the way. Uh, I didn't even realize there was a chess player with the same name, but uh, now I do. That's why I told you. <laughs> yep. We also have Ricky Martin, 1971, a Puerto Rican singer, Menudo, an actor, General Hospital, born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. All right. Yes. And we have, uh, in 1973, the, uh, the 49th birthday today of Stephanie Meyer, American author of the Twilight Saga, born in Hartford, Connecticut. 
So if you want to read bad vampire novels instead of the good one about Dracula we talked about a few days ago, uh, she wrote them. Huh. We have also the 48th birthday, born in 1974, of Orion Seacrest, American DJ, on air American Top 40, and television host for American Idol since 2002, Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve since 2005, Life with Kelly and Ryan since 2017. He was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I wonder if he still does that Seacrest out thing. You know, but... Dude, he looks like Robbie w Williams. Like, <laughs> hi guys, Merry well, Christmas. Movie. How you doing? Merry Christmas Eve. How are Happy you? Happy. Well, I could, I could be better. Uh, I'll tell you about like how I got screwed today, but I'll tell you that after the show. Oh. <laughs> But hey, now that you're here, but, uh, can you want to talk to us about who was born on this date in 1991? We have a Louis Tom... Tomlinson? He's 31 today. Uh, he was born in 1991. He's an English pop singer. One Direction. Oh, that guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, happy birthday, pop singer. One Direction guy. He was born in uh, Doncaster, England. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's English. He's like the he's like the male version of the Spice Girls, right? Or like yes. one of the members, you know, at least. Uh, I. Oh, I, I don't know. Are the Spice Girls British? Like, if they are, then that's that's a lot of gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. The Spice Girls are. Dude, what, what do they know about spice? Brit British food is bland as hell. Like, they have no right to, to make anything labeled spice. They don't know anything. Uh, well, then you would also, like, I beg to differ that, like, you'd call the Midwest. Uh, they didn't, they don't like to do seasonings, too, but actually, they do now. So, I mean, they've redeemed themselves in the Midwest back in Minnesota. Thank you. Oh, so we're on desk now? Yeah, Oh, perfect timing. I know, right? I talked to a guy. All right. So uh, we're going to start with 427 I want, AD. I wanted to we have say, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Bob wants to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say I, I talked to a guy named Paul Atreides, and he knows a lot of about spice. Huh. <laughs> ah. Nice. Well, go on. Do you want to start off, off to us then? No, Alice, Actually, you're, you're you can the, start. You're, Alice, you're the death girl. Come on. Yeah, I'm Lady Death. I, I really do have. I deserve this one. 427 AD, we have Archbishop Sinius? S yeah, Sicinius, yeah, yeah, of Constantinople, the first. Yep. Yeah, so Sicinius, the first of Constantinople, he died today. We, oh. also, <laughs> we also have Vasco da Gama. He was, he died in, uh, for, oh, no, yeah, from 1460 to 1524. So, yeah, he was a Portuguese uh, explorer and viceroy of the Cochin, the Cochin, or the Kite, Cochin? Cochin? Cochin. He, died, he died about the, the Cochin. Way down in Kokomo. You know what, so, me, no, yeah, he died, he died around the age of 55, though. Let me, uh, let me uh, use uh, Discord's text it's, to speak uh, to see. The Oxander it's said Cochin. The Oxander said Cochin. 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 The cookie Coco Boa. We down in Coco. Sorry, I, I couldn't help myself there. Oh. And, and, uh, he, was, he, he was not the viceroy of cocaine. Oh, so God. Let, let's just put that the out. Viceroy of cocaine? Woohoo! Oh, he was in uh, uh, Kochi, uh, also known as Kojin, in. Uh, um, now in India. All right. Uh, we will have to uh, look that up later, I guess. Um, we are at the deaths in uh, 1869. In we have Edwin Stanton, U.S. Secretary during most of the American Civil War, 1861 to 65, and U.S. Attorney General, 1860 to 1861. He died at five. Alice, are you outside? I'm hearing wind. 
Yeah. Well, no, I I started hearing like I could, I could feel the wind and I was like, oh crap. Yeah. So, Mr. No, no, I'm not in the wind anymore. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. So, M Mr. Stanton was born in 1814 and died in 1869. Yep. 69? Right. So fun! And in uh, 1914, we have the death of, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, John Muir, maybe? It sounds right. He was a Scottish naturalist, naturalist and discoverer of the glacier in High Seras. He died of pneumonia at 76, you know, water in the lungs, that yeah. thing. And he was born in 1838. Huh. And we are joined by GLaDOS, I think. I think Alice yeah. is trying to say something. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I'm having really bad Wi-Fi issues here, but um, no, I think that we talked about him last year. Well, actually, no, because it was Christmas. We didn't do a show that week. Yeah, never no, mind. Remember, I took like a two-week <laughs> break before we like you know hit the hit the grindstone on uh, January first. Yeah, we did. We yeah, and we totally did hit the grindstone. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have uh, a fresh. We have, oh, oh. we have Francois Darlin, died on the state in 1942, was a French admiral of the fleet during the Second World War, and a Vichy prime minister, or Vichy, uh, from 1941 through 42, assassinated at the age of 61 in his headquarters in French North Africa by resistance fighter Ferdinand Bonnier de la Chapelle. Huh. All you right. know, Vichy. Jesus Christ. Cheese and rice. Oh, my spirit is Vichy France was the German occupied French. Yes, it uh, was. Uh, yep. So he was a bad yes, guy. Yes, it was. So. And it was a much worse guy. He wasn't a good dude. Yep. But then we also have Carl uh, Dolitz. Yep. Uh, Alice, you're very robot -y. You're like very laggy. Oh. <clears throat> like. Anyway, we have Carl Donitz, died on the state in 1980, was a German naval admiral and the last leader of Nazi Germany, died of a heart attack at the age of 89 in 1980. Wow, like, I'm surprised he didn't, like, execute him or something. Uh, he was born in 1891. Oh. Well, in, uh, uh, on, on 8 May of uh, 1945, he authorized the, uh, uh capitulation, the, um, German instrument uh, of surrender, it is called here in English. Okay, okay, he, so that so he was he, like the the guy to like uh, authorize yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, the unconditional capitulation of the Wehrmacht. So uh, oh. essentially, he uh, ended the war in Europe. Good. By, by resigning. All right, good. So he was a good guy. Oh. All right. oh. 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 So he no no. He was not a good guy. He oh. was, uh, but he had to resign. Uh, he noticed that the war was lost and uh, there was no sense to make uh, German casualties. Yeah, he was a baddie. So he, he was a bad guy, but he recognized that uh, that they were done. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, but he was a part of the baddies. Yes, he was. Can you hear me now? Syphilis check one, check two, syphilis check. Yes, syphilis is confirmed. Um, you want to talk to us about uh, 1997 here? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, me? Oh, me? Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Or, or, uh, you, okay, Alice. okay, yeah. Okay, so we have uh, Toshiro Bethun. Uh He was a Japanese writer and actor. Uh, he's known for uh, Rishamanan and uh the seven samurai and also shogun so i think he was a voice actor for uh, voice actor for shogun but he huh. died at the age of, age of 77 in 1997. Huh. all right huh. we also have he was born in 1910 died in 1998 we have ramir uh, Ram, 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 uh schreiber he was an American physicist. He was known for the Manhattan Project. 
who helped develop the first atomic bomb during World War II and prepared for Fat Man, the Fat Man bomb. Not Little Boy, but the Fat Man. And that was used in the bombing of Nagasaki, and he died at the age of 88. Dang. But yeah, so he he was known for uh, helping produce, uh, you know, because the two bombs we dropped in Japan were Fat Man and Little Boy. Yeah. So he was on the Fat Man um, yeah. project, part for the Manhattan Project, if that and makes uh, sense. Afterwards, he went on to work on the design of the hydrogen bomb and led the plutonium pit teams for Operation Crossroads nuclear test on the Bikini Atoll. Jesus. <laughs> oh, 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 the, the wow. one where, like, we, like, sank half of the, the island? Yeah, the one where we accidentally, like, figured out that uh, hydrogen operates oh. differently than atomic. Yes, it so. does. You're, they're like, holy crap, but then you have the Tsar bomb, remember? That was, oh. uh... That was up in the Arctic Ocean, though, right? Well, that was, like that some was Russia. The Tsar bomb was yeah, designed yeah, to I be... know that was Russian, but... Yeah. yeah, but they called it the Tsar bomb. But, like, he was gonna do a hundred, uh... Megatons. Kilotons, but he decided to go to... Oh, no, megatons. And he decided yeah. to go for 50 instead. Well, the reason and why is they... because they believe that that, uh, that 100 megatons would literally start dissolving away the atmosphere. So it could have honestly destroyed the Earth. So they just yeah. detonated it at a half yield, and even then, it's the largest man-made explosion to this date in history that we are aware of. Yep. So. Yep, the Tsar bomb. Now, I want to yeah, interrupt here real quick to uh, bring up um, Blob, Blob just here uh, about this uh, this guy, the, the German guy uh, beforehand. By his own admission, Donitz was a dedicated Nazi and a supporter of Hitler. Following the war, he was indicted as a major war criminal at the Nuremberg Trials on three counts. Conspiracy to commit crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Planning, initiating, and waging wars of aggression and crimes of the, against the laws of war. He was found not guilty of committing crimes against humanity, but guilty of committing crimes against peace and war crimes against the laws of war. He was sentenced to 10 okay. years imprisonment after his release. He lived in a village near Hamburg until his death in 1980 after a prolonged illness. So there we go. Hamburg, that sounds like a familiar town sound name. <laughs> yeah, just like Frankfurt. Well, you can go you can get a yeah. Hamburg, a hamburger and a Frankfurter at the same time, you know? Oh, well, yeah, indeed, indubitably. And then that's when you get the hunger. Oh, <laughs> oh good appetite. <laughs> My God, really? Did yeah. you just say that? <laughs> yeah, no, no. Like you get the hot dogger. It's a hot dog hamburger combination right here. I have it. No. Uh, we, yeah, do you see. We it? call it the hockey. We call it a hockey puck in uh, Minnesota. But That's actually, weird. no. Actually, like the hockey puck burger, it's actually like in the shape of a burger. Like so, it's circular and it's wide. But it's a, but it's fucking hot dog. The ham dog. Hot dog or ham dog? Which which uh, which? Oh, uh, ham dog. But ham no, dog. like uh, the hawk. Yeah, but the hawk. Is that the? That looks like it's like fully like been like breaded and deep fried, for your perfection. To no, your no, perfection. No, no, no. That's that's just the bun. Like they just they just bisect a, 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 a hamburger patty with a hot dog, and then you put toppings uh, on it. And it's a hot burger. It's a hot dog hamburger combined. Oh no no wow. Well, yeah. It's beautiful, but same time i got a better oh my god oh i just saw like like the broken like half hot dogs like in the bun right oh, there this... uh bottom bottom uh two over and the bottom left oh god what the hell is that <laughs> yeah i just saw that i was like what no Actually, they basically that's like really just smart. Thought, like... that's really smart they just uh they cut on one side of the hot dog so it can bend be flexible yep so, so then they're right shape of a hot dog yeah Yep, we're, you're gonna have to put that picture in the uh, hot dog channel. Yeah, I'm gonna save that <laughs> picture actually. Oh, uh, actually, you better, buddy. Copy image. I'm gonna post it in Mikeless right now because, uh, yeah. Dude, why don't you instead of Mikeless, why don't you post that in hot dog? Hot I will. Dog. I will. I need to save the image first, and in order to do that, because of its format, I need to copy and paste it in a paint, then save it. So it's fair like, enough. Yeah. So I'll do that here. Yeah. In a minute. But Blob, it's your turn. 2008, I believe. Uh, yes, and I also found two more for afterwards. We have two in 2008. 
It's uh, Harold Pinter, who was born in 1930, a British playwright and screenwriter of The Birthday Party and The Homecoming. He died at 78. Oh. And we oh, also have... Guy. What? Oh, it's like, oh, good guy. I was looking at his ears huh. in the picture. Look at, those, oh. look at his wrist, dude. His, his wrist is so thick. <clears throat> no, no, he's got wrists like me. <laughs> And we also have Samuel P. Huntington, in, uh, born in 1927 and died in 2008. American political scientist, the clash of civilizations, and presidential advisor. He died at 81. Oh, man. Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. <coughs> sorry. Uh, then we have 2011. 2011, we have a cheetah. Or a cheetah, Chetta, Chitta, a chimpanzee's a chimpanzee actor uh, from the 1930s Tarzan franchise, uh, died of kidney failure at the age of 80. That is old for a chimp. Holy crap! Well, well, well chimps can like what they found is like uh, like monkeys do live like similar like lifespans of humans. So and chimpanzees particularly do. Same with I think. Uh, well, I'm not sure about gorillas, but. Um, I do know chimpanzees can live long. Like it's kind of like a like a parrot. You know how parrots can live like 80, 90 years longer. I did not know that. Yeah, uh, yeah, parrots like like the uh, you know the, the rainbow looking yeah, I know what parrot. A parrot is. Well, there's a, well there's different breeds of them, but uh, a macaw, a macaw parrot can live up to uh, ninety to a hundred and ten years old. Huh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, they usually can be passed down with families and stuff like that. But, like, chimpanzees also have been known to live for a, a long time, too. They have long lifespans, too, like us. So. Well, that's really cool. I just learned something. I, oh, I learned another something today. So. Yep, you learn something new every day. Yep. Yes. And then in 2021, in just last year, we lost Wilbert Kramer, was a German soccer coach, MSV uh, Duisburg, Bayer Leverkusen, uh, 1860 Munich, and Fortuna Dusseldorf, died at the age of 82. Oh, damn. All right. I, I, would, I would like to add one more. Yes, go, go for uh, it. Okay. In 2012, we have the fantastic actor Jack Klugman, however he is pronounced. He started. He was, he was Oscar in The Odd Couple. He played Quincy MD and uh, many other things. Uh, Goodbye Columbus here. And uh, he was also in an Outer Limits episode and Twilight Zone in several episodes. Alice, does the name Ray Collins ring any bells for you? In Who? it. Ray Collins? Ray Collins, hang on a second. Let me look here. Uh, like my 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 man child of a boyfriend just uh, texted me, so I was like reading it. Ray All Collins, right. American rock vocalist, Mothers of Invention. Um, not that, for me, but uh, but my dad actually might know who they are. For whatever reason, what, I saw that name that? and it, it's in my head for something. I don't know why. Like like the name sounds familiar to me too, but I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. But um, I, I will call my because you know it's Christmas Eve and yeah. stuff. It's actually Christmas Day in New Zealand. But uh, I'll call my dad up here and ask him if that name uh, sounds familiar. And then uh, what I'll do is like you can just like I'll tell you who he is, like and what he's known for, and if he my dad knows, and we can put it in the search like thing below. All right, and Blob, so, you had uh, one more you wanted to talk about, right? I just did. Okay. All right. Well, that shall conclude the show. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including one unlimited to all things Omni Coalition. And please check them out. Uh, Blob did a really good job at finding links, so we have a lot of good links out there for you guys to sink your teeth oh, into. Oh, heck yeah. Good job, Blob. Yeah, no, Blob always does a good job. The good job, Blob. That's uh, that's going to be his new nickname, the good job, Blob. <laughs> good job. We're just going to change his name to good job, Blob. You know, I'm going to just sounds that. like a, it's. I'm gonna do that right now, actually. Hold on a second. Protoblob. Good job, Lob. Good job, Lob. Well, 
There we go. Hey, hey, blah, by the way, Merry <laughs> Christmas and a Happy New Year. Or Happy Christmas, Hana Kwanzaa, cut to you. Yes. Happy Yule and uh, whatever else you uh, celebrate. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm Christian. I'm Lutheran, so I, I, I celebrate Christmas, you know? Yeah. Anyway, for your yeah. dose of past events daily, we stream every day at 10 in the morning Pacific time, which is 11 Mountain, 12 Central. And 1 p.m. Eastern. As well as? 7 p.m. Go, go for it, uh, It's 7 p.m. German time. Yes. Yeah, I was trying. I was just trying to match his voice so we could be like one and the same at the same time. But oh, I think I trying to do a duet. No, I was trying to like you know yeah yeah like yeah, yeah operator yeah you know what I was you want know to get that. <laughs> uh, anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am Ao Xander. I'm from Blob. Blob. Uh, I'm good job Blob now yes. apparently. Good job Blob. I am who is Alice, aka. Lady Death and Bloody Kisses. And Stapes and Pam Poovy and Bitch Puddin. Yep, and Stapes and Pam Poovy. Like, I, I'm the lady of many names. Yes, you are. <laughs> Dude, the amount of uh, monikers people get in this server is astounding. Like, everybody has multiple name nicknames. Like, I think I'm the only one really untouched. <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway, until you catch us tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! <laughs>